Welcome to Atlanta Live. I'm your host, Pastor Yavis T. McKenzie. We are in for a treat tonight. God is going to bless us. I encourage you oftentimes, the pandemic is not going to last always. I know what the enemy is trying to tell you, but I want you to be encouraged tonight that God is still sitting on the throne. Get your pencil, a pen, something to write on, because you'll want these guests to be able to come to your church. You'll want them to speak at your event so that they'll be able to bless. And the musical guests, you're going to want to talk tap and just enjoy what God has for you. Don't forget that if you need prayer, dial that number 770-300-9828 and there are prayer warriors ready to pray for you again. Atlanta Live is on the air. Tell somebody, don't watch it by yourself. Why don't you just begin to call a friend and a neighbor and do that. Now let's go and be blessed by Jay Mentor. His eye is on the sparrow. <laughs> Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart
did you feel that? Did I tell you? God's eye is on the sparrow and he watches over you. I don't care where you are, what are you doing? God is still has his eye on you. Again, that is Jay Mentor. Woo! Y'all, we're going to enjoy him all night tonight, and that is a blessing. Well, let's be blessed, amen, by our first guest, Ayana Bean. Welcome, welcome, welcome. There are several people that it, it, it's a different story when you've traveled. Some people talk the game, but you've been there where you've traveled with those that are on Billboard. You've been there and you do that, but your beginning was not so great as some of us, right. you know, would just put it because you can look at your circumstances and then say, I'll never be there, but then God transitions you there. How do you get from that place where nobody wants you to that place where everybody asking for you? Well, I think that um, having confidence in yourself okay. is one of the biggest things that you could do, but also um, being true to yourself and who you are, actually. I think uh, we, get, we get lost. Mm -hmm. People get lost because they're not sure where they're going or, or who they are. Right. So now um, you learn to, to build that up. Um, you do a lot of praying and asking for direction. See, yes. You, know? <laughs> you, you do that, and when you do that, you find direction. How is it that you were able to look? Because there are a lot of people in the situation that you were when you yeah. recognize where your neighborhood was and you recognize and you say, something got to be better. Something has to be different. Talk about that experience. So when I was young, I got to experience the difference. Okay. So I went to, um, I went to school in the suburbs. Okay. And I lived in, in the hood. Okay. You know, so I saw the big difference. <laughs> <laughs> so as you were driving, you go, stop this. <laughs> we're not in Kansas anymore. Right, we're not. It took about, um, the drive to school was about an hour. Whoa. You know, to go to school every day. So um, the kids in the neighborhood, we would leave at like 5 or 6 in the morning. Probably was my, my bus stop was around that time to get to school. Oh. So you could see you leaving the hood and going into the suburbs, you know. Wow. The nice houses and everything was different. Everything was different. And, and the experience, what does it say? Because I know when you're looking, and I know when I travel now and you go through the neighborhood, you go, yeah. I go through this wonderful neighborhood just to get to my neighborhood. <laughs> and so you look and go, what was the feeling and emotion? Because there are a lot of people now mm -hmm. sitting that's watching the program and they drive through different neighborhoods. We have houses popping up. Right. Mine may only be 100,000 and the one right down the street is 500,000. How do we deal with that aspect of us as the old folks used to say, trying to live like the Joneses. Well, one, one big thing is to stop comparing yourself. Wow. You can't compare yourself to this house or that house because you don't know what anyone's doing to have that house. Right. And, and that's a big key that people miss. Yes. You could be living in the smallest home. Someone else could have the biggest home, but your family's working for that home. Wow. Their family's maybe working another way. It could have been gifted to them, handed down. Exactly. You, you never know what someone else is doing. They have a, a nice car. To me, it looks like a car note and an expense. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know? it, it's not the, it, it, it may not be the best situation for you. Mm -hmm. It could be for somebody else. So you have to really know who you are, what you can do, what you want to do in order to be okay with looking at you. Amen. And not down the street, you know? And so then in the process of you coming from, as we say, the hood, yeah. being able to travel, then you get recognized and you're traveling. Yeah. You're, you're doing what a lot of people's dreams are. Right. You're traveling with artists. You're there. You're seeing, you're not behind the scenes. You're with the scene. Yeah. Talk about that experience. Because there are a lot of people that go, I want to be able to do that. I want to work with this artist. I, want, I just want to carry their bags. I just want to carry the water. I just want to be able to go. Talk about that experience because sometimes it's not as all as glamorous as one would think. No, not at all. Um, when I wanted to learn about the music business, I was learning about it and I wanted to learn about it hands on. Okay. So I traveled to places like here in Atlanta. This is the hub of, you know, urban music. Mm -hmm. So um, there were a lot of events going on here where you can learn about the different um, aspects of the music business. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just knew I wanted to be in it. Okay. So I came and I went to different events and I learned about the business and doing that, I met good people. Okay. I, I, I met a lot of good contacts that I had that became mentors to me okay. um, that were teaching me the business. Um, and uh, one of them was 
a turned out to be a really good friend of mine and still a mentor to this day. He um, was coming into my city, mm -hmm. and I said, "Well, let me. Um, well, how, what can I do to help?" Okay. And he gave me an opportunity, wow. and from there. It just continued to grow, and then I became more and more and more fluent, and learned more, and met more people, and then I got more opportunities. Talk, Ayana, talk about the aspect because there are a lot of people want to sing, there are a lot yeah. of people want to rap, there are a lot of people want to act. Mm -hmm. How important is it to know the business side? We've seen so many artists lose their entire empire mm -hmm. because they don't know how to handle the business. They say, well, my manager going to do it, my mama going to do it, my daddy going to do it, my cousin, they're pookie, mm -hmm. all of these people going to do it. And at the end of the moment, there are people having to file bankruptcy and people having to do things because they don't know the business part. How key is it to know the business? It's aspect? the biggest key. Um, and 2021 we're in right now, you've seen all the movies, you've seen yes. new edition movies from my town, of course, you know, you've seen, um, you've seen everyone's story mm -hmm. on big celebrities, mm -hmm. big projects, multi-platinum and broke, right? That's because you hired someone to do a job that you didn't even know what that job entails. Wow. So you can't hire someone to come do work for you, but you don't really know what they're supposed to be doing. Right. So therefore, how do you know if the job is being done correctly? Right. So if you want to be the best artist, mm -hmm. not just the artist, but be a business as well. An artist is a business. Yes. So learn your business, yes. learn your craft, learn what is supposed to work for you and how it's supposed to be working for you. And then you can stay on top of those things. But a lot of people don't want to read. This is just like it's too much paperwork. That's just too much contracts. I'll just get that to somebody else to read. I'll get no. that to some. And then you ride the fine print to go, okay, well, they get 20% <laughs> of what you're making because you didn't read the part of the contract. You have to read it. And if you don't know how to read it, you have to get an attorney. Okay to help you to understand okay. what's in front of you. Okay. And then take notes, and you may not, you still probably don't know what they're talking about, but right. take some notes and then do some reading and learn it. You know, practice these things because if you're not in control of your business, somebody mm -hmm. else is in control of your business, right? That's it. Right, so if you wanna get ahead and you wanna stay ahead, then this is what you need to do. There's no getting around this, Amen. none at all. Amen. So you've gone, you've traveled with, I'm not going to ask you to name a whole bunch of people, <laughs> but you've traveled the business and you've mm -hmm. gone forth, you're raising children to be yeah. able to do what needs to be done. How does that feel? Because sometimes it's on the road. Yeah. Did you raise your kids on the road? Did they travel on the road or was that pre before that? Well, it w well, my kids were, you know, um, elementary school age, middle okay. school age when I was doing this. And they came to, with me to a couple of places. So wow. they did come with me. And it wasn't that I stayed on the road for long periods of time. So it would okay. be a couple of days out of the week on some weekends and things like okay. that we would do. So I wasn't really raising them on the road, but I was trying to teach them how to work. Okay. How to work, okay. how to network. They watched me. They came to the events with me. They see me put my own events together. I made them work the events. They, that, right. <laughs> automatic <laughs> automatic right. employees, right? Right. They were automatic employees. And, and, and it felt exciting to be building something with my children. Oh, wow. And then to think that I'm teaching them this and they're going to learn this from me. Wow. You know, so that was, um, I think that that's also key in anything that you do as well. You can't just show. The, the fruits of the labor. You have to okay. show how you get to the fruits. And then to be able to know how the inner workings. I, I just remember days with my father just traveling around. Mm -hmm. You learn a lot of the business just watching them mm -hmm. do things. And so God has traveled and you've traveled. What are you doing now? Because, well, again, you've been there knowing, as they say, on one side of the mm -hmm. tracks and then be able to see. How do you compare to what God is doing to say, oh, okay, this is where I was and this is where I am. And now he's showing me where I need to be. Well, it's been a long journey. Okay. And the journey is still continuing, of course. Um, the difference back then and now is I probably wasn't listening. Oh. <laughs> you know, I wasn't, right. I wasn't listening. Right. I didn't um, take in the signs. And they were all around. Okay. You know, they were all around me. But I didn't, I, I didn't have the maturity and the, you know, the, the knowledge of this path. Okay. Um, it, it took some things in my life to bring me here. And um, I'm just grateful that I'm able to be here that, you know, I didn't 
go away for good, you Amen. know. And I, I'm glad that I'm able to stand here and, and not have gone. Um, you know, it, it could be another route for me. Mm -hmm. It could be another uh, another direction. But I'm, I'm just grateful that I'm I'm not I'm not then. I'm I'm sitting here. Amen. You know? And see, I, I know they want. Where is there? Can can we just <laughs> delve that just a few moments? Because see, yeah. I want people to see that God can recover you. Oh yeah. Because there are a lot of people saying, Oh, okay. Once I'm in this, this is done. Mm -hmm. Let's talk. Just if we can just two minutes yes. about where you were. Oh, yes. Um, I was in prison. I was in prison uh, two times in my life. Um, I was in state prison, and then I was in federal prison. Um, just in 2014, I was in federal prison. Wow. Um, it wasn't until then that I had this, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> okay. What are you doing? Who are you? What do you want to do? What are you trying to do? Where are you going? Mm -hmm. um, I remember walking into the doors of that federal prison. Mm -hmm. I was in Lexington, Kentucky, wow. from Boston, Massachusetts. So, you know, to give you the whole runaround very quickly, um, my youngest son drove me to the bus station. I was a self-surrender, which means that they allow you to turn yourself in. Yes. So I got on the bus from Boston, my son, you know, brought me to the bus station and I'm getting on the bus to go to federal prison in Lexington, wow. Kentucky. And on that ride, I just asked God for peace. You know, I didn't wow. want, I didn't want anything else but to have peace to deal with what was facing me. Wow. And um, I got that the minute I walked to that door. Wow. So it wasn't really long. <laughs> mm -hmm. It wasn't a long time that I asked before it came. By the time that they opened that door for me, I had peace. Wow. And I knew what I was here to do. Wow. And every day that I was there, I had peace. Amen. And I came home with it, and I made that the goal. So everything around me was for that. I was there to learn wow. about myself. Wow. And I took that in and I did it with God. And see, a lot of people look at that and go, oh, okay, she was in prison. Mm -hmm. Sometimes our past experiences right. are those best teachers to help us and then we're able to help others. What are some of the key things that you learned? We got a few minutes. Just okay. a <laughs> couple of key things that you learned because there are a lot of people, I'll say this, that are locked up physically mm -hmm. that are better off than those locked up spiritually. Absolutely. So let's talk about, I know where you were physically, mm -hmm. but talk about those inner turmoils that you were in spiritually, mm -hmm. that even though you were there, like you said, the peace, and somebody's watching, how she had peace in prison? Because when you're set free, I'm by shy, I felt yeah. that. When yeah. you're set free spiritually, right. no matter where you are physically does not matter. So talk about that. So you're right. My body was in prison, but my mind was always free. Yes. And sometimes, well, and I will say, but before I got there, mm -hmm. I was locked up already. <laughs> <laughs> See? I was yes. locked up yes. before I got there. Yes. I wasn't open to truth. Okay. But on my way there, yes. that all changed. Being there, that all changed. Um, I was in that world, but I was not of that world. Mm. I was in a place my body, yes. my mind was at home, my mind was in my future, my mind was fixing things. Yes. I was doing time, time wasn't doing me. <laughs> I got wow. to prison, I started working the second day, I had two jobs there. Wow. I went to church every Sunday, I participated in the community things, and I went to the gym, and I read, and I learned about myself. Wow. And so, being in prison, Again, you have a choice. What are you going to do in your prison? Are you going to be the prison? Wow. Or are you going to bring something else to the prison? Wow. What are you going to take away from prison? Wow. And that's, a, and that's a major key. And those are major points because it's important. Because you could leave prison tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You could forget all about it. Yes. And you'll be right back in six months. Wow. You know? So you have to leave... Um, you have to leave your, your locked up self locked up by itself. <laughs> and you have to stay free. I love it. That bondage. Yes. Being able to do that. There, there, um, in just about 60 seconds, there are women that are watching. There are men that are mm -hmm. watching. They're watching even in prison. How can they get, I know it's hard to ask in 60 seconds, uh -huh. how can they get set free while they're there in their bondage, physically and spiritually? Say that's what you want to do. 
tell God that I want to be free. I want to be out of bondage. I need help. Say it. Yes. Talk to him like he's the person sitting there. And when you go in there, and if you're, if you're ready for that, then you will see that the CEO is God. Yes. You'll see that the other prisoners is God. Uh -huh. Everything around you mm -hmm. will be God because that's how you're going to carry yourself. That's what you want. So if that's what you want, now you, you have to do the work. There are people watching now. We got one minute. Mm -hmm. How can people get in touch with you? Because I'm feeling that anointing to where, again, bound physically and yeah. spiritually, but there are people wanting to be set free and mm -hmm. say, oh, okay, I'm listening to Ayana now, and I want to get her to talk to my women's group. I want to get her to sure. talk to my men's group. How mm -hmm. can they get in touch with you? They, um, I have a, I have a um, Facebook page. Okay. Everything is... All social media for me is Miss M S dot Y A N A B E A N. That's on all my social media platforms. Okay. I also have a website and it's um, www.ayanaveen.com. So A Y A N A B E A N dot com. And they can get in touch with me right through there. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you so much Thank for being here. Yeah, it is good when you can feel the liberty in you and to knowing that again that God has yeah. set you free and like you said you could have been there yeah but God has placed you here so that you can encourage us again one last time 60 30 60 <laughs> seconds give us that website again so that they can be able to enjoy you okay my website is ayanabean.com that's a-y-a-n-a-b-e-a-n.com Amen, amen. <laughs> Ayana Bean, you all, that's a blessing. Again, you don't have to stay in your bondage. You really don't. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is allow God to set you free. Who God has set free is made free indeed, is set free indeed. Whichever you want, you want to do, be made or set, God is still going to free you up. Amen. At this time, we're going to be free to praise God. Jay Mentor, my soul has been anchored. <laughs>
That is Jay Menta. My soul has been anchored in the Lord. Are there anybody out there, do you have a feeling at times that you just being blown and tossed and driven every which away? That's the way the old folks used to say it. And there has to come a time where you have some anchor somewhere in a church, in your family, in your home. As the song said, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. Rest assured, make sure that your soul is anchored in the Lord. You can't trust in horses. You can't mm. trust in chariots. You have to trust in who God is and what he has called you to. Again, we're being blessed by Jay Mentor. Well, my next guest, <laughs> Dr. Christopher A. Wembley. God bless you, sir. Bless you, my friend. Bless, bless you, bless you. you. Thank you, you are the uh, chief pastor at the Hunter Hill First Baptist Church here in Atlanta, Georgia. One yeah. of the things that I love about you are a preaching machine, sir. <laughs> it's just one of those, you know, when, when, here in Atlanta, you know, we all of us, I grew up in a teaching ministry. Okay. And so, therefore, you know, with Pastor Ronald Gumby, Colette Gumby, we came up in teaching ministry. Yeah. There are still some preachers here who can hoop and just bring it. <laughs> And, and you are one of those. What is God doing at Hunter Hill First Baptist Church where God has you placed? Well, um, just to give you a little background about Hunter Hill Baptist Church, I have been there uh, 17 years. 17? 17 years. 17 years there at Hunter Hill. Wow. Yeah, been there 17 years. And um, uh, we're getting ready to come upon our 85th church anniversary. Wow. And um, there at Hunter Hill Baptist Church, you know, when I first got there, um, the Lord gave me this, this, this mission to focus on seven E's. Okay. And I say seven E's. It's, we, we focus on evangelize and enlighten the sinner. Okay. Embrace and encourage the suffering. Okay. Equip and empowering the saints. Okay. But most of all, exalting the Savior. Yes. And, um, and so we try to stay within those but with those seven E's okay. to do what we need to do what God has called us to okay. do. Yes, sir. I see that. Yes, sir. So <laughs> they, look, see, that's why I told them to get a pencil and a piece of paper, something <laughs> yeah, to write yeah, on, yeah, yeah, so right. that they'll be able to build on those. So in the process of doing that, you're making sure that those are the pillars that you fall right. on. How is it that when you come into a church, 17, wow, I'm just, a, 17 years, you come into a church. Pastor, teach us how when you come into a church, what are some people supposed to do? Because I'm, I'm, I'm just watching and seeing how, again, some people, when they take over churches, God bless yeah. them to come into a church. Because the church, as you say, was already existing. Yes. How did you come into Hunter Hill being able to do? You know, there are a lot of people come in, I want you to change this, change this, change this. How did you make that entrance? Because there are a lot of people now starting churches or either right. going into churches. Help us preach us out. <laughs> um, Exactly what you said. It was it was already established. Yes, sir. And I came there um, in my late twenties, um, single, younger. Um, and I guess one of the greatest challenges um, for a young pastor okay. that takes on a church that's already been established okay. is trying to get people to see. Mm. And when I say see, I'm talking about see the vision. Vision, yes, yeah, sir. Vision. That's 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 very yeah. very very important. Okay. Um, and getting folks to see the vision, some will catch on. Okay. Some take a little bit more time. Okay. And there's some folk who would never see. It. <laughs> <laughs> right. 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 And so um, a lot of times I try to tell pastors now that I see that was in, that's in the same place where I was. Yes, sir. I tell them it takes prayer and and wow. patience, but also teaching. Yes. Because um, you can be so excited about a vision and what God has given you, um, but just trying to get people to see it. Yes, sir. You know, to, to see it and understand where you're going and uh -huh. what God has placed inside of you. And sometimes we get so excited that we get into a rush. Okay. Um, matter of fact, to be honest with you, um, there are some things that I got a revelation on years ago that is just now manifesting. Wow. Yeah. See, a lot of times we get the revelation, but okay. it takes a little bit more longer mm -hmm. for the manifestation. Yes, the manifestation. Yeah. You got to have that preparation. Right, part. right. Preparation. Be better to right. do that. Uh -huh. yeah. I caught that right in between. Yeah. Because I heard that sermon. <laughs> write your notes, y'all. Write yeah. your notes. <laughs> I've learned it right in the process. Yeah. In, the, in, in doing that, you're there in the, uh, the community. Again, the church, you're vital there in the community. Correct. How much do you play a part in the community, and how much does community play a part? part in your church? 
Um, well, we always had our, um, our food bank, also our, um, our, our clothing closet that we have there at our church. And we try to, uh, well, before the, the pandemic, we would always make sure we do things in the community. Yes, sir. Um, since the pandemic, I was excited to um, be able to say that we're one of the first churches in the community or one of the first churches in Atlanta uh, to give out the vaccine. Um, wow. Right. Yeah. Look at that. For COVID-19. Yeah. So uh, we have always been instrumental in our community okay. because um, my motto is if your church up and move from the community with the community mission. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> now that's a question right there. <laughs> yeah. That's a question right yeah. there. If you would get up and do that, because that means that you have to be interwoven in yes. what you're doing and then what they're doing. Yes. You wonderful church there. Y'all have some of the singing. Is quite, what I love <laughs> about Hunter Hill, you all. What I love about Hunter Hill, you it, you have to catch them on whichever Sunday it's going to be. You just never know if y'all just going to go straight out traditional right. or if it's going to be contemporary. And then we've been there for the anthems. I said, what in the world are they doing? And it, how do you get the people, like you said, to see the vision right. of a traditional church being yeah. able to do more than just traditional music? You know what? I... um. Another thing that I've learned in pastoring, you got to have balance. Okay. Especially when you walk into church, it's already been established. Okay. You know, um, a, lot of, a lot of younger preachers like to just go straight with the contemporary. Uh-huh. And that's good. Okay. You know, you grab the young people. Yes. But what about, you know, you know, mother oh, or uh, grandmother uh -huh. who've been here for 50 or 60 years. Tide payers, uh-huh. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say it. You can't say it. I'll go ahead and say it. The tide payers, go ahead. Right, right. So you got to, you got to have a balance. Yes, sir. You know, um, and so sometimes people laugh at me, but like at, on, on our worship service, sometimes, um, you know, the choir or praise team could be singing songs, you know, contemporary songs on the radio. And, um, you know, the older members, you know, they'll, you know, but they really not into it. Uh -huh. And then right when they get through, I might just break out with a hymn. See? You know? <laughs> See? That's it. Because the balance the of balance. making them feel like they're still yes. a part of the church. Yes. How do yes. we keep that, Pastor? Because there are a lot of, as I say, the church is going now. There are mm -hmm. a lot of people that have forgotten or they're not catering to those things. They say, well, they've had their time. Now it's the young people time. How can we encourage some of the churches not to forget about those who paved the way for us. I think that also comes with your teaching. Uh-oh. I do. I, I think that really comes with your teaching. Okay. The leader um, has to be able to see what, uh, who God has entrusted him with. Amen. You know, my congregation is different from the pastor that's, that's down the street. And so um, you have to be able to see uh, the people that God has entrusted you with and be able to minister. Because when you look at the word ministry, mm -hmm. ministry means meeting the needs of people. Talk, sir. Yes. That's what it is. That's what yes. ministry is. Yes. Meeting yes. the needs of people. So I understand where God has placed me. Okay. I understand who God has entrusted me with. Yes. So, you know, I have to be able to minister yes. to the people that God has entrusted me with. And I know my church is not for everybody. Okay. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> so who's right. going to come, who's going to be there right. is going to be there. Right. Yeah. How, how is it that, that again, you've taken the church again? I, I, Pastor, I'm just 17 years. It's been that long for real. Just being years. able to keep that. I know Dr. King said longevity. Yeah. Has its place. Yeah. How do you maintain that longevity? in a church, again, that was there and existed before. And still, you all are still having people to join the church. Right. How are you all dealing with this during the pandemic and people still joining? Listen, it's, it's, like, it's like being able to, to minister, especially in this season. Okay. You know, we used to sing a song in the church. I don't know if you ever heard it. That's an older song. It's a charge keep I have. <laughs> yes, but sir. But in that, in those verses, it says uh, to serve this, this 
present, present age. age. Uh huh. Yes, sir. And so I think that we have to, as pastors, we have to hear what God is saying. Yes, sir. Uh oh. Not just what He said. Yes, sir. But what He's saying. Oh, you're talking. Because even after yes. Revelations, yes, He's still speaking. Yes, yes, yes. A lot of times we get hung up on what God has said, and that's good. Yes, sir. But you also got to be sensitive to the Spirit. Yes. To be able to hear what God is saying. Yes. Yes, yeah, and and because of that, see now I'm finna pull on you. So what is he saying to you, Pastor? What is he saying in this day and time? Because there are a lot of people, there are a lot of preachers watching. There are a lot of people watching. I need a word. What is God saying? I know you're uh, talking about it at Hunter Hill. What is God saying to us now? Because there are preachers, there are people saying, I need a word. I don't know if I'm gonna make it. I've lost loved ones. I've lost people. I've lost things. Pastor, I need a word. What is God saying? Because guess what? I don't hear. I'm saying nothing. So I need somebody to tell me what God is saying. You know what? Uh, in Job, um, in Job 30, mm -hmm. verse 20. Yes, sir. Job 30, verse 20. Job said these words. He says, in Job 30, verse 20, he says, I cry out to you. Yes. And thou dost not hear me. Mm. I stand up. Yes. And thou regardest me not. Yes. Really what Job was saying, he said, I've been calling on you, I've been praying to you, but you act like you don't hear me. Yes. I stand up. Standing up was a form of acknowledging his presence. Yes. You know, I'm acknowledging you, but you act like you're not acknowledging me. Yes. And in that, it, there are times in our life where we feel like that we are experiencing the silence of God. Yes, sir. And there will come times in our life that we will feel like God is silent. Yes. The psalmist felt like that in Psalms 22. Yes. Jesus even felt like that because he quoted Psalms 22 on the cross when he yes. says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Yes. There come times in our life where we feel like God is being silent. But if we look at the story and the, and, 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 and the life of Job, yes. Job went through a lot of things in his life. Yes, Job, Job went through a phase of disaster and destruction where he lost everything. He went through a phase of death where his children died, yes. a phase of disease, he got sick. Yes. And then he had a phase of his friends and, and wife talking to him all kind yes. of ways. But Job had those frustrating moments where he felt like God was being silent. Yes. But one thing I like about Job is chapter 13, <laughs> verse 15. Yes, sir. When he says, though he slay me. Though he slay me. Yet will I trust him. Yes. Sir. I said all that to say this. Um, you see, when he says, I will trust him, he says, even though God knows what I'm going through and uh -huh. God is, is even allowing some things, uh -huh. I still trust God. I still trust it. And understand, that's what God is saying. We got to be able to trust him uh -huh. and understand that trust is different from faith. Sir. Trust is different from faith. Yes, sir. Help Everybody tell me I got faith, I got faith. Help That's us. good. That's good. Faith, but see, trust is the backup plan for faith. <laughs> When I say trust is the backup plan for faith, faith says I know he can open up a door. Yes, sir. Faith says I know he can make a way. Yes, sir. Faith says I know he can deliver. Yes, sir. But trust says even if he don't do it the way I want him to do it, yes, sir. I still trust and know that he's God. Yeah. And if we're going to make it through these trying times that we're going through now, yes, sir. even with the pandemic, yes, we sir. still got to trust him. Trust him. But I'm glad Job don't end with chapter 13. Yes. It don't yes, end with chapter 30. Uh -huh. But it ends with chapter 42. Yes, sir. Because in chapter 42, yes, sir. Job got blessed double yes. for everything he lost. Yes. Some of us in a chapter 30. Some of us in a chapter 13. Talk, sir. But if we hold on, hold on. 42 is on the way. 42 is on the way. It's easy to say I trust God when you're living in your chapter 42. Yeah. But God want to know, can you trust him in your chapter 13? Jesus. Yeah. Ooh, you know what? That's, oh, Lord, God. Uh -huh. <laughs> a lot of people in chapter 13. Chap uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Jesus broken and not being able to. Uh, Pastor, I, I received that. Th there's a process. Yeah. And we have to go. A lot of us want to give up before the end of the process. Yeah, can't give up. But he said we have to endure, endure. unto the end. See, that's what I'm saying. This is the kind of craziness that go on over <laughs> at Hunter Hill First Baptist Church. <laughs> where you get there and you just have conversation and all of a sudden I just feel the anointing just stirred up. There are a lot of people that, again, that are watching now. We got about um, 40 seconds to be able to. There are a lot of people that's wanting to give up. What can you just say to those people that's saying, I'm almost there at the point where I'm going to throw in the towel? When you feel like the enemy is throwing everything at you, yes, sir. 
trust God. Yes, sir. Because we got to even stand on his promises. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the yes, Lord sir. will raise up a standard. But let me tell you what that really means. We've yes, been, sir. We've been, I think we've been quoting that wrong uh -oh. because in the original writing, there were no commas and things like that. Yes, sir. We read it like when the enemy comes in like a flood. Uh -huh. In actuality, it's actually when the enemy comes in like a flood will the Lord lift up a standard. Oh, uh, so in actuality, the when the enemy comes in, uh -huh. like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard. So the flood is not on the enemy side. The it's flood on, is on our side. Look at here. Revelation, amen. How can people get it to see? <laughs> that, that, again, if you want good teaching and good preaching, Hunter Hill First Baptist Church, <laughs> is that, how can they find you, Pastor? They're, they're visiting here in Atlanta. They're coming to Atlanta. You know, we're opening back up and different things. Yeah. I know some closed and some right. are opening, and they're wanting to come and say, I need somewhere to worship, and I like what he said. How can they get in touch with you? Well, our physical address is uh, 166 Edward Street, Okay. Atlanta, Georgia, but you can also find us um, on Facebook, Hunter Hill First Missionary Baptist Church. Yes. Facebook, Hunter Hill First Missionary Baptist Church. And also I have my own personal Facebook page, Christopher A. Wimberly. Amen. And we got one minute in here. Not only that, but you one of the people here who make sure that while you're going spiritually, you get us while we did too. And oh, God Lord. has opened up the door. You have your own funeral home yes. there. And so you take care of us spiritually, but when we gone, <laughs> you make sure that we have that. How do you be able to bridge that path? <sighs> it's a lot. We got 45 <laughs> seconds. <We> got 40 <laughs> <laughs> Just being able to do it. How, how did God open up that door for you? Real um, I went in funeral business in the year 2007 uh -huh. in Gainesville, Georgia. Yes, that sir. was a funeral home uh, that was looking to sell. I went in, and when I went in, um, just started uh, helping families. And with even with the funeral business, it's a business, but it's a ministry within itself. Ministry within it's itself. It's a ministry within itself, meeting the needs of people and helping them through them tough times. And so Amen. I'm Amen. the owner of Wembley Funeral Home in Gainesville, Georgia, too. Yeah. Amen. Pastor Christopher A. Wembley, you all, that's how we're doing it here, and it's a blessing to be able, again, if you're in the Atlanta area, Hunter Hill First Missionary Baptist Church right here. We're going to Jay Mentor. What a friend we have in Jesus. Talking about him. <laughs> Jay Mentor.
friend we have in Jesus. Let me just say this. There are a lot of people that will fail you in life, but what a friend we have in Jesus. Again, Jay Mentor, are you all enjoying that tonight, being blessed? Sometimes it's just good just to be able to know, and I'm just really realizing this. There is always a time for a good hymn. Amen. Let's receive now. Let's go ahead and talk and find out who Jay Mentor is. Bless you, sir, as you come, and let's hear more about you. Bless you, sir. Bless you, man. Bless, Bless you. Thank you. No, everybody <laughs> ain't still singing traditional music. <laughs> Just to be able to do that, you know, That's as Pastor Wimbley was talking about, you know that contemporary, as the old folks say, is just temporary. How is it that you're still maintaining where you are? I believe in the anointing of God. Okay. And I believe that if you are going to be successful in whatever path you choose to take, especially when it comes to the things of God and in ministry. Yes, sir. You have to have the anointing. Yes, sir. And yes, in sir. my life, it's something that I strive for. Um, it's something that I pray about. And even in church seeking. Okay. Because the anointing is attached to who you are connected to. Woo. And who you sit under. Woo. And who That's you good, allow sir. to speak into your life. Yes, sir. So when you want to be anointed, then you attract the anointing. Then you look for the anointing. Uh, I was just thinking the other day, if I'm looking for a pastor, mm -hmm. you got to have more than me. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> you say that right. You have to have more have than me. more than me. That's right. If I'm going, you, if I'm following you. Yes, sir. You got to have more than me. More than me. If That's I fast it. once a week and you fasting once a week. That ain't going to work. I'm getting the same revelation you getting. See. <laughs> <laughs> and then I can have my own church, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, I, I, but I just believe in the anointing of God, and I just, God has taught me at an early age to just, it's not about the lights and the fame, and so many people have just gone out and tried to do it their way and yes. do their own thing. But I believe if you just wait on God. Yes, sir. And wait your turn. Yes, yes, yes. Wait until God get you ready first. Yes, sir. And then God have to put people in place to receive your gift. Yes, sir. And to be able to cultivate and to 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 train you. Yes, they sir. have to be prepared to pour into you. Yes, sir. So that God will will be accomplished. Amen. Through in and through you. I, I we've enjoyed you tonight, and you've blessed us in doing that. What yes, keeps sir. you grounded? Um, I've always loved the Lord. Okay. I was born and raised in the church, come from a line of preachers. I'm from Texas, been in Georgia since 2006. Okay. Came on my own, 21, uh, just believing that God had something better for me. Amen. And uh, came, um, slept at the bus station, slept wow. on people's couches, wow. slept in the back of the church. One time I was playing for, um, wow. slept in hotels until God sustained me. Yes. Uh, but I just, I just had a... Uh, an unwavering faith that God, if you allow it to happen, mm -hmm. if what they say, if you bring me to it, uh -huh. then you'll bring me through it. So yes. I just believed in, I, I just knew that I could never leave God. Okay. Even when I tried. See? Even when I tried. And we do try. Yes, sir. And I try. <laughs> but yes, the old folks used to say, hellhounds. Uh huh. And he sent. Yes. After my life. Yes. Until I had no choice but to surrender. I didn't bring you from Texas to Georgia. Yes. To act crazy. Uh huh. Your life is for my glory. Yes. And that has just, that's just who I am. I can't change for nobody. I can't be nobody different. Amen. It's just who I am. Amen. As yes, we have just a couple of minutes, what does it mean to you? Because again, as we were talking, Pastor Wimbley and even uh, Young, they're, they're the traditional part of music. Yes, sir. Do you believe that it's gone? Because there are a lot of people think it's gone. Do you think that the traditional music is gone? I don't think it's gone. I think it just depends on the person. It, it depends on the, the musician. It depends on the spirit of the musician. Mm -hmm. uh, when you go to a, a, a ministry or a house, it depends on the spirit that's in yes, the sir. house. Yes, sir. Um, the, the spirit that's in the house, the, the minister of music yes. is important because they, he cult, he, she, they cultivate yes. the, 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 the worship atmosphere the in atmosphere. the house. Yes. So if the minister of music or the one that's going to be choosing the songs, uh -huh. they have to have that in, in depth touch. Yes. And I, I grew up Baptist. Okay. Uh, 
So that's all we did. <laughs> Troop yes. Texas was my home church. Yes, yes. So that's what we saw him. Yes. Just as I am without one plea. <laughs> but when I got older, uh -huh. they, they mean something to me. See? And I guess that's what I stick with. Yes. I can get with it if it means something. See? It, 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 when, I, when I had to live just as I am without, without one plea, one I lived plea. it. Wow. What a wow. friend we have in G. I I lived it. See? And I live it right now. What a friend I have. Jesus. When I can't call nobody, when I see, see, you, so see there it is. There, but that's, that's it. it. But that that yeah. that's the part that I love about <laughs> traditional music. Yes, sir. Again, we can identify. It's nothing against again. No. Because I like the traditional a good music. Too. Is again, as I said, my grandma made good collard greens with that. I mean, <laughs> the best food was sung with right. the hymns. That's right. The traditional, and that's we, right. it was just a little bit and a little of that, but a whole lot of. God's tradition. Right. How is it that you still maintain where God is saying, okay, in all of this land of changing and all of these contemporary, there are some musicians, I'm going to just put this pair right here. Say, say what you want to say, sir. You know what I'm going to say. Say what you want to say, sir. There are some musicians in the church. <laughs> Why is it that musicians can't play hymns now? I, I'm, I'm just being honest. Well, I go to a lot of churches. Yes, sir. And, and if the singer is singing something and go to a hymn, they got to pull somebody that's a little older out of the church <laughs> and the congregation True. and scoot them off the bench because True. the young person don't know True. about the hymn. It's all about training and teaching. Okay. It's Go all about training. That's right. It's all about, all about training and teaching. My mother plays um, piano, sat me on the piano, and I learned hymns. Wow. And even now, the church that I uh, am minister, music assistant, pastor, all these things, uh, knowing the Warriors for Christ in McDonald, we... Church, old school way. See, if yeah. you want good church, yes, sir. find your way to McDonough, Georgia. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. No the words of Christ, Bishop and Prophet Stephen Holmes. But we, 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 the, we, the old songs yes, sir. Watch is it. what keep us going. Now, now I, hey, I like new songs. Yes, sir. Love them. Yes, it's some songs that are anointed that just came out 2000, 2000, because you got people that's after the heart of God. Yes, sir. But yes, as sir. far as the mass majority, mm -hmm. I think we as a people, as a whole, we need to get back to what carried us through That's and it. what got us to where we are right now. Yes, sir. How can people get in touch with you? Because, again, we've enjoyed you all this night. Yes, sir. I've, I've enjoyed, enjoyed you being singing, here. but I enjoyed you ministering right now, too. How can people <laughs> get in touch with you? Because, again, there are a lot of, as I continue to say, there are a lot of times where church is not going to be as we are now. We're going to get back to church. We're going to get yes, back sir. to it. We're going to get back to the conventions. We're going to get back to the concerts. Mm -hmm. And they'll look and go, oh, okay, you know what? That young man, I'm going to have to play that video back on Channel 57. I'm going to have to go back to Atlanta <laughs> Live and find find out Jay Mentor, how can they get in touch with you to say, I want him to come because I need a hymn in my church. I need somebody to put that little traditional notch in our concert. How can they get in touch with yes, you? Yes, sir. Well, I'm on Facebook. My name is Simple Jay Mentor. Uh, all social media platforms, you'll find me. Look, J-A-Y or just J? J-A-Y. You, you, you have to spell it out. <laughs> you have to spell it because... J-A-Y. J-A-Y. Mentor. <laughs> yes, sir. And you'll be able to find you. Yes, sir. So in this last thing, what would you say in these last 30 seconds, what would you encourage those young artists that are out there now that's saying, okay, I want to be able to get into music. I want to be able to pursue a music career like Ayana was talking about earlier, being able to mm -hmm. travel from where you were to where you want to be, being able to be in the circuit, how can you tell them just to say, this is where you need to start? Well, first of all, I would say, make sure you are ready. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have God in your music. Make sure you give your music to God. Yes. And then let God, uh, allow God to cultivate you and your gift. Wow. Before you get out there, because you can call any agency and say, hey, uh, I got a song, I got a CD, I got this. This whole bunch of basement studios in Atlanta, find one, and and it, you said but basement studios, go sir. Yeah, it's a, it's a whole <laughs> right. it's a whole yes, lot sir. of them. So yes, y y anybody can get themselves out there. Yes, sir. But the anointing is what's gonna keep you. Yeah. Character is what's gonna keep you. Yes. Where have you been, mentor? Uh, on the piano. Yes. At my grandmother's house. Yes. Even when I came out here, wherever house I was at, at the church, at asking God to just anoint my gift. Amen. Jay mentor you all. That's how God can do it. You don't have to change for nobody. 
And that's Sorry. all I hear, minister, pastor, assistant, pastor, minister of music, worship. You don't have to change for anybody. If God has positioned you in a certain place, God has positioned you in a certain thing, stay there until the Lord changes you. Yes. Stay right there until the Lord changes you. And then as pastor has said, Ayana has said, and even Jay has said, allow God to then change you. All you have to do is be who God made you. Dial that number 770-300-9828 if you need somebody to pray with you. But guess what? God loves you just as who you are and we love you even the more.